Hello, Halet Nation. Welcome back to the RV Nerd Herd dedicated followers that we have here. Always a pleasure to see you. And it's my pleasure to bring to you today a very popular model. I think the most popular thing I've ever seen for full-time fifth-wheel travelers. Uh, she weighs just a little bit over 11,000 pounds. It is the Montana 294 rear living, or it could be called the 295 if it has the residential fridge. That's the only difference between those almost identical Montana model numbers, by the way. It is a brilliant design that gives us the same big living room, basically, as something like a, a 3120 uh, luxury Montana, but it does so at like 30 34 feet dead on the nose tip to tail while still giving us all those things that you associate with a Montana like a 30,000 BTU uh, air conditioning system hot cold camp ratings full-time RV warranty auto leveling I mean the list goes on the king bed it does all of the big RV stuff but it manages to squeeze it down into 34 feet it is now carpetless uh, it has a towing hitch on the back that they didn't always used to have. It's like they just keep getting better. Roof, solar prep, the list goes on. This is an awesome rig. If you want a full-time RV, but you want to be on the road, you want to be able to move a lot, or you just don't want a giant thing behind you, you're going to like this one. I mean, when you walk into Montana, it's it should be no surprise why they are and have been the best-selling thing of their kind for like 18 straight years now. It's incredible what Montana's accomplished. No other luxury fifth wheel has anything close to that record. Uh, actually, um, Montana and Cougar are the two best-selling fifth wheels in the history of history, with the Jayco Eagle right behind that. And wouldn't you know it, we have the three best-selling historical fifth wheels right here at Halet RV. Guess we know how to pick them. <laughs> I, I think one of the differences there, though, is that we're people who actually go RVing, so I look for things like this. Like that big XL rain sensoring vent fan up there, and I love this light fixture. The accent light is just a nice touch, but just even the fixtures themselves have a, have a real classy look and feel to them. Then there's the detail work that Montana does, and... It's arguable that there's no one else that, that just really nails the detail work the way Montana does it. Like a 12-volt ceiling fan instead of 110. And where that's nice is, again, the High Country series being a little bit more of a tower and goer. If you're going to maintain a mobile lifestyle, you could stop anywhere. You could be off-grid and still have full function of that fan without needing necessarily uh, to uh, you know power up a generator or something. Now, a lot of fifth wheels have a 5120 BTU electric space heating fireplace back there, but not a lot of fifth wheels have a standard 16,500 BTU roof heat pump. So this RV also has 12-volt tank heaters. In a very real sense, this RV has an electrical heating system and a propane heating system, and what's amazing is you can run them simultaneously if you're so inclined. Now, that middle armrest right there is actually removable. So if you prefer a little bit more of a love seat over a theater seat or a cinema seat or whatever you want to call it, you got that right there. Now, the TV is obviously also on Boardwalk and Park Place, directly across from the Entertainment Center for a no-neck-wrecking good time. But if you notice, that TV can also pivot out. And we have ourselves a trifold sleeper sofa on the back over here. So this is more than just a couple's camper. It is very guest-friendly as well. Both sides of the sofa have sealed edge countertops on top of the stands with household and USB plugs. Now you saw in our earlier flash flyby footage all of these amazing windows and how they encompass the door side of the RV so that you're looking at your campsite, not the neighbors. That is a big thing that we're very aware of and sensitive to here at Halet RV. I think that's a, a very popular feature for a lot of good reasons, but you can see they also can blot out the sun if you are so inclined. So if the sun is coming in on that side of the RV and you're in that theater seat, it's not going to like bake you to death. You know what I mean? Uh, now, this is not a carpetless slide. Montana got rid of all that last year. Uh, it doesn't look the same as the main floor, though, so some people don't pick up on that on camera. That is basically like a, a heavy-duty, almost woven style, like pontoon uh, decking kind of covering right there. So if you do happen to spill something by the dining area, which is probably the number one area for spills that need some serious scrubbing, 
you got the perfect little way to be able to do that. Now, these slides are six and a half foot tall, as is the upper deck. So big people like me can fit in this thing without constantly knocking our noggins everywhere, which is a uh, problem that I have with high frequency, which probably explains why explains. Hmm. That is a combination of explains and brains, I think, which is a perfect segue into the fact that it explains <laughs> why I got a couple screws loose up at my old <laughs> mechanism. So starting up top here, you see the hidden hinges kind of peeking into view now. This is what I call better still cabinetry. It is an all wood core. And then obviously you've got the uh, full hardwood uh, door frames on everything. And then over here, the entertainment center even starts getting in on like the kitchen storage action with the way that the TV can totally pivot out of the way. Let's say you had a little gnome living inside that closet. You could almost pivot the TV around for him. Wow, this is going to take you way back, guys, and I'm way off topic, but you remember that old cartoon, David the Gnome? Whoa, that is taking me back. If you don't know it, Google it. That is like some old Nick kids kind of stuff right there. Now, back to the task hand. I'm sorry. The Symmetry Kitchen. Uh, Cougars started to do some of this, but I still like to call it the Montana Symmetry Kitchen just because they've done it for so long and so frequently. I love how we have the same cabinet space, the same counter space, the same... Uh, you know, drawer under the oven. Well, I guess that would be, you know, symmetrical anyway, right down the middle, but you get the idea. It's the same on both sides. There's one thing that's a little different. If you're looking at those two easy reach power outlets right there, notice how the one on the left has a little yellow sticker on it. That indicates that that is one of the inverter prepped outlets in this RV. There are four of them. The one back here that powers the TV, the one there in the kitchen, there's one in the bathroom, and one in the bedroom. There are four points in this RV where if you choose to add an inverter, or if you choose to purchase a uh, Montana High Country with their solar package, you will have an inverter that can live run those four outlets. Understand though, the mere presence of an inverter in an RV provides additional uh, tax and stress on batteries. Now, the door doesn't want to stay open, so I've got the little carpet square to clean my feet off down there. Another thing too is, just the way that they've utilized every little inch and nook and cranny of this thing. It's just, it's something that I like. Now, we'll uh, finish the kitchen in just a second. I wanted to actually jump over here while this door is open. Montana High Countries, they're still giving us just a physical switch panel. If you're like, I don't want all the digital, you know, mumbo jumbo. I don't want a Bluetooth things. I don't care. I don't like blue teeth. Well, okay, no problem. Instead, you can have some blue switches with blue backlights, but when you're not using them, they can be no light whatsoever. And up in here, that on-off switch is for our 12-volt fan, and there you see the switch for our 12-volt tank heaters, and that right there is the prep plug. If you do have the solar package, that is where a charge controller should be located right there. Now, we've seen most of the kitchen, but I need to zero back in real quick on the island over here, and I wanted to start on this side because it has that awesome folding extension. Now, several things just changed. Obviously, we took the sink covers off and we flipped up that counter extension. But are you also noticing that LED accent lighting under the countertop line that I just flicked on? That was not on before. I want to give you a nice little before and after sort of reveal. Um, <laughs> I've got the sink covers obviously just sitting there on the sofa, but this is nice. Uh, I, I've done some asking around. And I found that it's about 60-40 overall in the marketplace, but I think that's skewed by travel trailers a little bit. But 60-40 people, 60% 60 of people prefer a farm sink, 40% of people prefer a split sink. So Montana said, I've got 100% of you covered with a farm and a split sink. So if you're dry camping, you can use the little sink. If you're veggie prepping or if you're dish drying, you can do that. You got big pots and pans because you're going to spend some extended full-time RVing time in this. You got a space for that too. Now, the one thing you haven't seen so far is a space for a wastebasket, but they got you covered. Don't you worry your pretty little heads. And if I slide this shut real quick, one other thing you haven't seen is a lot of kitchen drawer space. And obviously, they got that covered too. Now, one other thing here real quick before we hop up to the bathroom. If I spin us around like a record, baby, I do that a lot. Well, two things, because this little motion light's going to kick itself on and illuminate the central vacuum unit right there, which is very handy. And I guess the third thing, I keep finding more things to talk about. The drunken octopus coat hangers right by the door, so you don't got to go tracking through the whole camper just to get a jacket or grab your keys. So what do you think so far, guys? You like what you see? Leave us a couple comments. Hit that subscribe button, like her, all that good stuff. Let us know what you think. We got a little more to cover, though.
Now this bathroom is a little different from most Montanas. They are using this bathroom in a couple of the high countries now, like the 280, the new smallest Montana that is taking the uh, you know designation away from this one. But very effective space. There's a couple differences on this that maybe won't work for everyone. And I hope you appreciate the fact that we shoot you straight on this stuff, guys. We don't try to hide stuff and ignore facts. We are truly interested in educating you and helping you find your second camper the first time. So first of all, leg room. I got long legs. I legit stretched my legs as far as I could. Now, I'm no yoga master, nothing like that. And I couldn't keep them straight out for very long because I lacked the core strength. But hey, Fact is, I could not touch the cabinets across from me even with my long legs. There is plenty of room to stand up to get dressed when you get out of the shower. And that is one of the differences here. This has a little bit different shower from most of uh, Montana's, even the High Country series. That is a big radius shower. I fit in there no sweat. I've got great headroom in that thing. I've got all the elbow room I need. I have no problems getting around in that thing. But that smaller shower... I mean, it's not a small shower. It's smaller compared to most Montanas. That was necessary for the following item. This bedroom, bathroom, super slide with closet over here. And this is especially important because it contains one of the key features, I think, that defines any luxury fifth wheel in today's world. And that is washer dryer hookups. If you look back in there, you see that it is uh, all set and ready for a combo washer dryer. This is one of the very few Montana floor plans that is not stackable, capable, but you know, everybody camps a little bit differently. If you are still looking for that stackable washer dryer setup, we have plenty of other RVs that'll do it for you here at Halitz. Montana's included, of course, but to get this one a little bit shorter, what they had to do, compared to some of the other big Montanas, they had to condense down that front closet, which meant it was no longer deep enough for washer dryer prep. So what they did is they extended the bedroom slide in here into the bathroom. Now, some people like a dual entry bedroom bathroom. Some people do not. Sometimes you feel like a nut, sometimes you don't. You know, that's why Almond Joys have nuts and mounds don't. Same kind of situation going on here. I saw the, uh, just like in the bedroom, you've got one of those rain sensoring vent fans right there. But as we come on down, you see uh, sealed edge counters with an, uh, kind of an asymmetrical bathroom counter space. They always give you some extra counter room here, which is why their faucets are uh, offset, uh, like not directly behind a little bit. Because that means that they can give you more functional space down below here. Which is what all you cool cats and kittens are seeing right about now. I love the, the dedicated drawer space and a space for a wastebasket in a bathroom like this. It is intensely frustrating to me how many RVs do not account for a feature like that. But, again, maybe that's why Montana's been beating them for 18 straight years. Now, as we move up into the bedroom, I want to point out that we're not just carpetless in the living room. You can see that we're carpetless even up here. Technically, a Montana high country has a 60 by 80 queen bed. We have upgraded this to a 70 by 80 king. That being said, short of a custom order, I believe you're going to be hard pressed to find a Montana of any variety, short of one or two specific floor plans where king beds are not available with a queen bed anywhere in the country. It's just not going to be a standard thing you're going to run into very often. That breeze window over there is a very welcome feature. And since this has that uh, kind of, you know, cross super slide up here, like this is a triple super slide camper just with an upstairs super slide that's uncommon. It gives us a great CPAP kind of uh, side stand over here with those easy reach outlets. Now up front, Again, they had to get a little creative since they were trying to shave a little bit of length off this RV. And what they did is very cool because it also made some room for something you don't usually find in one of these. That front windshield right there. So if you feel like waking up and overlooking your campsite, you've got an awesome place to do that. But of course, there is a privacy shade for it. So what they did here is they came up with kind of a mine and yours hanging storage arrangement. Now, don't forget... If these two closets you're about to see are not enough hanging storage, 98% of people who don't use washer dryers have that entire space in there to use as hanging storage as well. So there's still plenty of it here. But you've got uh, one on the left, one on the right, with all kinds of like almost dresser space in the middle here. Well, I guess not almost. It is dresser space. But you know something I thought about? The way that this is arranged and the way that those outlets are positioned, if that door were closed or if you chose to remove it you could sit on the bed and you could use that as a desk 
Because I know that there are so many people who are doing mobile working right now, teleworking, especially given, again, our current world climate and pandemic sort of situations. People are mobile and, you know, living out of their RVs more than they ever have before. Um, well, you know, you could use that as a desk space. You could use this as your desk drawer space. You could still have some hanging storage over here. TV hookups on the wall right there, by the way. And you still have dedicated dresser space across from the bed down here. Now, I feel like, oh, yeah, I know what I was going to forget to tell you. Oh, I wasn't going to forget to tell you. I have forgotten to tell you. The second air conditioner, uh, standard on these. You've got 30,000 BTUs of quiet cooling power on a Montana high country all day, every day. And a quick look here now with the slides closed. So when you're traveling, which considering this is the shortest, well, no, now it's the second shortest Montana, I think traveling is something that you're really concerned with. Even with the king bed upgrade, the door can open and close unimpeded. And something you don't see is behind that door, Montana includes a nice little magnet holdback. Now the bathroom here has that closet slide, but it does not stop you from using anything in transit here. You do need to step in and then close the door around you but um, who was planning on using the bathroom with the door wide open anyway? And, uh, you know, maybe don't answer that because I'm not sure I want to go camping with you. <laughs> now, something Montana is really good about back to, back to the task at hand. You do need to take a little bit of a sideways step. They were uh, as conservative as they possibly could be. But even with my thick in the midsection dad bod... And two coats, because it is cold at the time of this filming. I hope you folks appreciate the dedication that we still go through all the same efforts now that we would in the beautiful summertime. You can still get in here, get to the sink, you can get to the entirety of the fridge and the freezer. And that is something that Montana just as a whole really excels at. Couple things here. First of all, you see how the entry door is the same height as those six and a half foot tall walk-in slides. Well, it's a six and a half foot tall residential height door, nice and 30 inches wide. What I like about the width on that is if you're cooking a big platter or something or other on the campfire, you don't have to try to like weave the, uh, the food in through the door, which is just always a recipe for disaster. You can see how just like Big Brother Full Montana, the High Country series here, is using the zero gravity steps. And they are thankfully that uh, more ride step above easy adjust variety. That is all it takes to uh, adjust those legs. And if you want to shrink them down, you hit that little push pin, you push the leg in, and that's all there is to it. Now, another, uh, another nice thing about these steps being up out of the way is it gives me an easy vantage point for something I often forget to talk about. You see that little white flag kind of barely flapping in the breeze down there behind this huge drop frame, which is what's going to give us that nice storage that we'll see in a minute? That's your gas grill quick connect. A lot of people don't realize that's down there. A lot of people actually think Montana's don't have them, and they certainly have not ignored all of the uh, outside cooking folks and Blackstone enthusiasts. That's not how you become the single best-selling fifth wheel out there for, what, 18 years in a row now? It's nuts. Um, the uh, awnings, look at these things. You know, two big, massive power awnings on here, all sorts of uh, campsite patio coverage, both of which, of course, have their own LED lighting. Now, uh, Montana does a really good ride and handling package. My father, Mr. Halet, is a Montana user and something he constantly rants and raves about like two or three years now. He's, he's stayed in the same Montana layout, which is not like him. Normally, he likes to try this one, try that one, try every other which one. He really likes his Montana's now. And something that he kind of cites there is the fact that they just tow so nicely. The shock dampening pin box, the road armor suspension system, the uh, wet bolt uh, fasteners on the suspension shackles, those kind of things, they mean something. If you're an, a person who really tows and goes, you're going to love that. And I love that they have those features here on the High Country series, just like Big Brother Montana, because that's the thing. They're more similar than they're not. The High Country series is just a little bit more tuned for folks who live a more mobile lifestyle, while what you call full Montana, I guess, is more in tune for people who have a bit more of a park lifestyle. But you can you can tow a big Montana, you could park a High Country and be just fine. These are and have been hot, cold camp rated since 2005, which uh, uh, by my math is like more than seven years. <laughs> Obviously, uh, the docking center. 
It is obviously fully enclosed. Easy reach disconnect and key TV over here. If you're not familiar with that, basically what that means is there's no more signal antenna booster nonsense that you're going to have to worry about. And this is that drop frame compartment. This is actually a little bit smaller than some of the other uh, front pass-through compartments. I'd say like a 330 Montana here at Halitz. But, I mean, you know, considering this RV is like four feet shorter than that one, tell me that's not enough space. That is a large pass-through right there. And if we get down below here, you see the little sewer hose kind of tube caddy, keeping our black tank stuff away from our fresh stuff. And you can't see a whole lot. It is a, uh, you know, enclosed heated underbelly. But uh, again, insulated, radiant barrier, and 12 volt tank heaters are going to do the job of keeping you protected in that extreme or uh, kind of cold uh, situation. I can't talk all of a sudden, holy cow. I bent over here and it forced, you know, my fat gut forced all the air out of my lungs and my brain quit working for a minute. Just wanted to give you a quick look at her here real quick. I'm actually right next to the road recording this, um, you know, Hopefully nobody runs me over. That would be a bad day at the office. These have reverse travel lighting built into the taillights, which is really great when you're backing into a site at night. Or if somebody parks right in front of you at like a gas station and you got to kind of weave your way out backwards a little bit, it helps everybody else be like, hey, look, I'm having a bad day here. Help me out. And, you know, you can see me coming. Four-way wiring harness and a hitch with safety chain hooks means we have ourselves a 3,000 pound uh, rated towing hitch on the back of this. And considering this is one of the smallest Montanas, if you're looking to do something like put a boat behind it, like a little flat bottom boat or a small cargo trailer, the shorter length and the built-in factory towing hitch is an awesome one-two combination. I know a lot of people that do stuff like, uh, you know, um, uh, dirt bikes and stuff around here. That's a, that's a big part of the Southern Michigan culture, all the dirt tracks and things. This would be a great one for that. Now we've already gone over here by the steps, so there's two more things I want to show you. First of all, it's just catching my eye. It's just it's awesome what they're doing. The gloss on that skin, you can literally see the reflection of the horizon there in the background on it. And then down here, this is something I've not done a good enough job on with Montana's in the past. I need to get better about this and I feel like I failed you folks. So I want to take a second to zero in on these Saloon tires. This is a very underappreciated item in the RV industry because it's Chinese in origin. So people tend to condemn it for some reason. The fact is, if you look at the technical specs on these tires, they actually do exceed Goodyear Endurance radials in some respects. Uh, this is not a slouch thing here. If tires and, and qualities and things like that are something you're uh, concerned about and you want to learn about, this is something I would be looking into. And there's a good look at the Road Armor suspension system. If you really zero in on it, one of the things I like about it is that it has a shock dampener both above and below the shackle. And I think that is really one of the main secrets in its sauce. Not only those wet bolt fasteners that you can see, but the fact that uh, it, it doesn't just soften bounce, it tries to control and eliminate bounce and jiggle going down the road. And the more that that fastener, that shackle right there, soaks up road jitters and vibrations, the less your cabinets, your refrigerator, your appliances, your everything else in this beautiful luxury fifth wheel have to get stressed and jiggled and banged around in transit. That little thing makes one heck of a difference. Just a quick look at a couple of my favorite features up here on the roofing. The first of which, of course, is the uh, roof solar prep from Jaboni that's over here. Uh, now, they do offer a factory solar package from Montana. It's 300 watts, includes an inverter. It's absolutely awesome. Mr. Halet has had it on his personal Montana before. Um, the uh, Super Flex Solar, by the way, is only available on the big Montanas, not the High Country series. Now, a couple things. If you're looking around the seals of that roof vent, it's a little wavy right there. That's because this RV is fresh off the production line. It has not gone through an off gassing period. And make no mistake, almost any RV that is produced looks like that when it first comes off the production line. The difference is we actually show you here at Halet RV and most places don't. You see how the rest of the roof is nice and smoothed out? That's because this hasn't bled out yet. Once it bleeds out, that'll all be gone. But what I want to show you is you see the little nubs sticking up through the ceiling. That is, those are basically little mounts where if you want to add like roof vent covers, you can do so without ever needing to like screw anything into your RV. There's no brackets. There's no none of that. You just put the cover on, you put the pins in place and you're done. Simple, easy, less expensive and no concerns about warranty loss. And that is smarter. And if you've noticed, it's kind of what Montana does. They build these things to last, not build them 
hoping that somehow you screw up the warranty and they're off the hook. So when you're ready to climb to the mountaintop, choose Montana and go glamping instead. <laughs> And if you appreciate all the information that we've given you here in this video, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button, folks. And do me a favor, leave me some comments. Let me know the things that you like on this RV and let me know like, if there was something you could change, what would that be? And if there's nothing you'd change, let us know that too. And when you're ready, give us a call. If you have extra questions, we'll get you extra answers. And we don't do hidden dealer fees. We're about as easy as it gets here at Halet RV. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy Halo Camp and everyone.